Hi guys, today's topic is antibody test and the real death rate. We have two groups here. One is liberals who claim that the death rate is 10% and we have to stay in our basement till the end of our life. And another groups are conservative who claims it's just 0.1% death rate and you can go to the football game tomorrow. Two recent shocking studies came out. One is from Santa Clara County in California, which claims that the death rate is basically 0.1%. Another study from New York State suggests that the death rate is rather 0.9% to 1.2%. We know that the median age in Santa Clara is lower than in New York State, but the difference cannot be like 12 times. Some of the researchers are clearly manipulating the data, and today we're gonna find out what's going on here. Just a quick note about antibody test. The idea here is simple. If you had COVID in the past, your body will develop some antibodies and this test will be able to detect them so that we can see how many people were sick in the past. As you know, there are so many people who went asymptomatic. And the idea of the whole study that we're going to select a small percentage of the people, test them and then extrapolate this data to the whole population. Let's look at California study made by John Ioannidis. What are your conclusions based on your study? We realize that uh, the number of infected people is somewhere between 50 and 85 times more compared to what we thought compared to what uh, had been documented. This guy looks like a stereotypical professor from low-grade movies. Why would they select someone who suggests conspiracy theory by his look? The infection fatality rate for this new coronavirus is likely to be in the same ballpark as seasonal influenza. I don't remember seasonal influenza killed that many people in New York City. This guy represents the point of view of people who think that COVID is a hoax. But this guy is a legit scientist. So let's look what's wrong with his study. Here is the paper. There are no peer reviews um, yet, but let me be a peer reviewer. This study is done for Santa Clara County, which has 1.9 millions of people. How many people did they test? 3,330. First of all, you might say, how it's possible to test 3,000 people and got the results for the whole two millions of population? It's actually legit. Let me explain you how statistic works. Look, if you randomly selected 3,000 people out of 2 millions, mathematically you will get a very precise result. The problem here is that selection is never random and you might get a significant error at the end. Let me illustrate this problem by example. Suppose you have a county which has only two groups of people, techies and students, and they don't really interact between each other, but they are interacting within their groups. And let's say you test 1,500 students and their positivity rate were 30%. And then you test 1,500 tech people and the positivity rate there is 15%. Now, how do we combine these two values? You might say, let's take the average. Well, actually it's incorrect because in reality you have much more techies than students. And let's assume that in our county we have 10% of students and 90% of techies. Now we can take 10% multiplied by 30% and then add 90% multiply by 15% and then we will get 16.5% which is a combined positivity rate. The important assumption here that you selected your students and your techie in the random way. If it's not, it won't work. The art of these kind of studies basically is to divide our population into small groups. Each of them has a more uniform COVID spread and then at the end combine it with appropriate weights. The bad example of division for our study would be blue-eyed people and non-blue-eyed people. Probably there are 10% of blue-eyed people and 90% of non-blue-eyed people. But the problem is that they all communicate between each other, so there is no really difference between COVID spread in blue-eyed people versus non-blue-eyed people. So basically this kind of bucketing is useless. So your goal is to avoid this kind of division. The guys from the study decided to group people by zip code, sex, and race. For example, the bucket might be 9066, male, white. Then we calculate the infection rate within each of the bucket and at the end apply some weights and combine the final value. It's exactly the same idea as we did for students and techies, but on a larger scale. If you think about classical American county, this division makes sense. People do interact with people from their areas, so COVID prevalence within different zip codes can be different. Race matter a lot in the US in terms of social interaction. Gender is not really that divisive, but maybe there are some biological factors which affects the COVID infections we don't know yet, so it's okay. 
I used to live in Santa Clara County and Bay Area for a pretty long time and I know that this county is completely different from everything existed in the US and here is why. Problem number one, Silicon Valley. Basically very expensive, boring suburban place. The majority of people living there are relatively rich techies uh, which work for big companies. And one third of Silicon Valley belongs to Santa Clara County. This include headquarters of companies like Google, Apple, Intel. Some techies prefer to live in a less boring place called San Francisco. And it's a proper city. Every day tens of thousands of tech people taking corporate buses from San Francisco to Santa Clara County, work there and go back for the night. And they actually can work inside this bus. In the same time, you have less privileged non-tech workers which cannot afford to live in San Francisco or Silicon Valley. So they all live in East Bay and they are driving their cars from East Bay to Santa Clara County on a daily basis. Basically, there is a crazy commute of tech and non-tech people to Santa Clara County every day. It's kind of incorrect to measure just one single county when you have such a crazy movement. Why don't they make a study for the whole Bay Area that would be way more appropriate and precise? Another issue that tech workers and non-tech workers might have a completely different COVID infection rate because of their commute habits. And you have a third major group there, which are students. You have Stanford, Santa Clara and San Jose University. And these people don't commute at all. So you have three different big groups with completely different commute habits. And the buckets from this study does not count these things. Problem is that race doesn't really matter for social interaction between tech workers and students, which is true for all United States. But the problem is that this county has an extremely high number of tech people. So this race bucketing might be useless. Another problem, age. Where is the age bucket? You know that the death rate is quite different among the age. And if you're 70 plus, you most likely stay at home. And if you're 30 plus, you maybe invite someone from Tinder. So that COVID infection rate among different age groups is extremely different. But again, this study for some reason doesn't account for age at all. Next problem. I told you that you need to make it as random as possible, right? How did they select the people? Participants were recruited using Facebook ads targeting. People who are using Facebook and reacting to targeted ads, it's quite a small subset of population. So it's biased by definition. Why don't they go to the grocery stores and test everyone going there? It would have been much more random. How do they calculate the number of deaths? If you read here, you can see that on April 10th, there were 50 people died from COVID and then there is a 6% daily increase. So they expect to have 100, 100 people died at April 22. First of all, why it's like this? Second of all, why don't you give us a range? If you watched my previous video, you know that from Korean data, if you're at the peak of epidemic, your death rate will increase by 3x at the end of epidemic. It could be 150 instead of 100. Like, I don't know how to count this. Finally, let's look at the zip code map. As you can see, the sample is heavily biased toward people from Stanford University, which is something which you can fix statistically. But the problem that if you look at some of the neighboring uh, zip codes, you can see there are like 10 to 20 samples. If you add gender and race, you will get two to three samples per bucket. Imagine you have a bucket which has three people and one of them is positive. What does it mean? It means that the infection rate is from zero to 33%. It's that imprecise. As I told you, race is not important for tech people and students, but it is important for non-tech people. If you look at the race rate, you can see that only 8% of the tested people were Latino, where in reality you have 25% of Latino within the county. And again, it's something which you can fix within statistics. But the problem that is 8% is only 260 people. If you make male-female division and then you have 58 different zip codes, you will have up to five people per bucket. So we have the same problem of imprecise statistics per bucket. Okay, too many things are wrong with that study. Let's move to New York one. The antibody study for New York State were presented by Governor Cuomo several days ago. We've now tested 7,500 people statewide. Percent statewide, that's positive, is 14.9. Long Island, 14. New York City is up a couple of points. Since there is no real paper published, I don't really know what's going on underneath, but I can speculate why this test is better than the Santa Clara one. 
First of all, testing the whole state is much better than testing the small county because of this mobility issue. Well, there are probably some people coming from New Jersey to New York, that's true, but it's nothing compared to the whole Bay Area coming to Santa Clara County every day and go back. People in New York interact way more between each other because they have a public transport and it's a place with a highly concentrated population. And that makes distribution of COVID more uniform. How did they test people? They went to grocery stores which is much better than Facebook ads. Another thing that government Cuomo said that it's a preliminary test and he will update it every week, which is amazing because you can get an updated data and then correct everything if you want. And it's never the case for Santa Clara County. They never corrected it for the whole Bay Area or whatever. And the age breakdown uh, is fairly consistent with where it was. It looks like that they collect statistics based on age. Again, we don't know how did they use this at the end. Maybe they don't use it at all, but at least they have this data. And the final thing, Cuomo doesn't really articulate the death rate. Because as I told you in my previous videos, death rate is highly correlated to age. So it doesn't really make sense to have this one global death rate. But we can still make it. And if you count it using this study, it's going to be 0.6% for New York City and for New York State. And again, if you watch my previous video, you know that this death rate might increase up to 2x. At the end, the death rate of New York City will be probably from 0.9 to 1.2%, which is a little bit more. And the current official death rate is 6%, and I believe it can grow to 9 to 12% unless they will increase the number of tests. The conclusion here is simple. You have a California antibody test, which looks like a scientific article and created by a scientist. But if you have just a little bit knowledge about the county, you can see how many mistakes are made. We don't know whether they made it intentionally or unintentionally, but definitely this whole study is just invalid. In the same time, we have in New York state studies. We have no idea what is the science behind them. But from the way they made this study, it looks way more legit and way less biased. And I'm not a supporter of any kind of lockdowns. And I prefer California data to be truth. But unfortunately, it's a fabricated science. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.